Jetstar, the low-cost arm of Qantas, an excuse people give for why Australian and New Zealand airlines need to cut back on service and upcharge you. Having repeatedly flown on Air New Zealand before, I found a Jetstar flight back from Queenstown up to Auckland that fit my schedule. Is Jetstar really the Ryanair of Australia and New Zealand, or is it something more? Let's find out. I paid $139 US dollars for a flexi-change fare that came with a check bag, exit row seat selection, and a meal. I had a host of interlocking separate tickets on this trip, so was willing to pay the few extra bucks for the ability to change. Like Air New Zealand, there's a 7 kilogram weight limit for all your carry-on baggage combined, which they claim is for your comfort and safety. Hell, my backpack was 7.4 kilograms itself! Thank god they didn't weigh bags though, supposedly they often do. I checked in and dropped off my bag. The Queenstown airport has two halls, one before and one after security. Last time I flew on Air New Zealand propeller planes, there was no security. Apparently, security only applies to the larger jets. I totally missed the boarding call, but it's done by zone. The aircraft also boarded from both the front and rear stairs. The 3-3 all-economy layout was comprised of dark, slimline seats. Legroom in the exit row was pretty great. For reference, here's the legroom in the standard row. Still not terrible, and there's a small mesh pouch. There's no power or Wi-Fi at all. We taxied down the runway before turning around. And took off towards the southwest, over Lake Wakatepu. before turning south along a fjord as we climbed. Flying time to Auckland was an hour 34 at 35,000 feet. Sitting on the left side, I thought I'd get a great view of Mount Cook, and again I picked the wrong side. We flew over the ocean, so my view was mostly of a bunch of clouds. Let's talk service. Jetstar has a buy on board model, though my ticket came with a snack and a drink. Completely forgetting this, I declined, thinking I'd have to pay. But it's already well established that I'm a forgetful idiot. I was surprised, though, how many people were buying the food with real debit or credit cards. It's such a stark contrast from Air New Zealand's lack of any buy on board meal options, but I doubt you'd have this many people buying food and drink on similarly length flights in Europe or the United States. Just a curious observation more than anything else. The cloud cover remained thick and only really broke when we were on final approach to Auckland. Landing from the east 10 minutes early. We got a real jet bridge in Auckland. And I headed downtown for my long layover. So Jetstar, you know what? I actually liked it. Sure, there are the annoyances of low cost carriers, but the more premium fares really didn't cost that much more and came with things like exit rows and meals while Air New Zealand doesn't. And the flights really aren't that long, so it's not like you need over-the-top service on a sub-two-hour flight. Jetstar long haul or in other countries may well be different, but for traveling within New Zealand, it absolutely gets my approval. To see Air New Zealand's side of the story, you can click here. Otherwise, I've got some time to kill in Auckland before my next flight on Hawaiian Airlines, which you can see here when it's live, or the whole playlist here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.